federal election campaign, but Australia isn't the only place gearing up for a May poll. The European Parliament is holding elections next month too. Yes, the EU elections, a bit you don't think about those very often. Voters in 28 countries, including the UK, yes, for now, are eligible to vote. They weren't supposed to be, uh, despite Britain's decision to leave the European Union. And joining us to talk about this, Michael Pulch is the EU ambassador to Australia. He joins us now, along with Nineta Babalescu, who's the Romanian ambassador to Australia. Good morning and welcome to both of you. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Uh, why are the EU elections so important? You can make that argument. Well, uh, they are one of the largest democratic elections in the world, in fact. So they um, span 28 countries, as you mentioned, across the European continent and represent 500 million people. Mm. Um, they are important because this parliament will decide about the future of Europe in the next five years. They will elect the next commission. They will ratify agreements, including, hopefully, the free trade agreement between Australia and the European Union. Uh, they will ratify um, uh, agreements and legislation that will pass by European um, Council. So it is, it is a parliament that for the next five years will determine a bit what is happening in Europe. What about the uncertainty of Brexit? Well, the uncertainty of Brexit um, means that we have extended um, the period uh, of the withdrawal um, responding to a request by the UK government. And that has led now to the situation that, Virginia, you explained, that the UK government has now agreed to also participate in the, in the elections. Um, yes, because by, by now they were supposed to be out, of course. Right, unless, <laughs> unless they would leave uh, yes, before right. the elections. And, and after the representatives would, would shift to other nations? Well, um, originally we had, we had um, felt that we should uh, reduce the number of representatives yeah. uh, following the departure of the UK. Um, now we'll probably keep it as it is yeah. and then we'll define a new system afterwards. Yeah. Netta, has the, is the EU functioning um, from uh, your perspective and the Romanian uh, point of view as well as it should? Well, yes, because uh, we are uh, perhaps the most successful uh, organization uh, in the history of the humankind. Think about all um, dimensions, political, economic uh, integration. So uh, for 28 and in the future 27 countries around the table, I think it's functioning very well. And there's a high, still high degree of enthusiasm in Eastern Europe in particular. Will there be uh, many Australians in Australia, um, Nineta and Michael, who are eligible to vote in the EU election? Um, yes, so in accordance with the various legislation of the EU member states, 20 countries out of 28 uh, currently uh, allows their uh, respective diaspora to vote abroad. That means 20 ethnic communities uh, here in Australia right. will vote mm. next month between 23rd and 26th of May. And do enough people vote? The, the, the turnout is different in different countries. Well, That's define enough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's absolutely right. And, and one of the reasons that we are with you this morning is, in fact, to encourage uh, European citizens uh, here in Australia and Australians with dual nationality to check whether they are eligible to vote and either vote themselves uh, or, or talk to their families and relatives and friends back home. Because uh, very often people underestimate the importance yeah. uh, of, of the European Parliament and that vote. And we would like to make that point. Yeah. Well, well, we're big fans of democracy here, so we urge anyone who may be dual citizens to make that check. I guess they can check with their respective embassies or consulates, correct? Of course, and also uh, with public websites. Uh -huh. uh, in, in general, uh, all, I think all uh, European Union uh, citizens may vote, uh, if they are entitled to vote abroad, may vote if they do have a, a valid passport or a valid ID in the D date of voting. Well, let us know if you'd like Michael Rowland to go out and, and, and sit on your election coverage panel because he's very, very good at that. Oh, yes, actually the accreditation for foreign observers <laughs> are, right. are already open, so yeah, you're fantastic. most welcome. Yeah. Good morning, Michael. Was here, he'd be right. signing up right now. So nice to spend time with you. Good luck for the election. Thank you very Thank much you very indeed. Thanks for Thanks coming you. in. All right, let's have a look at the morning's headlines now online and for the major news outlets right around the country. The Age Today reports that Labor has decided to sacrifice further taxes.